The investigation into New York City's geological history begins here, with Manhattan's rocky outcrops. These rocks are clues to how the land was made and how its geology helped it become a dense, thriving, pulsating city. They're scattered all over Manhattan, poking through the surface of parks and through the concrete between the buildings. Some, squashed between two apartment blocks, are the size of a whale. They are the extraordinary survivors of ancient times. Most importantly, they are the surface tips of the bedrock in which Manhattan's buildings are anchored. Gigantic skyscrapers stand in two clusters, in downtown and midtown. In the section between, the buildings are lower. The clues to the shape of Manhattan's familiar skyline are the rocks beneath the surface. A leading expert on the rocks in New York is geologist Charles McGarrian. The entire history of the development of the Earth's crust is emblazoned in the rocks beneath us. Uh, the rocks here in New York City harbor an, an ancestry that dates back over a billion years of time. McGarrian is searching for evidence to show how the city's bedrock was made. At Inwood Hill Park in Upper Manhattan, he's found an extremely hard piece of the bedrock known as Manhattan Schist. To the untrained eye, it's just a piece of rock. But to McGarrian, this is his first clue. The rocks that we're looking at right here are rocks of the Manhattan Schist Formation. And the, these rocks are very severely deformed. And the structures here in this rock is a structure that comes up like this, bends around, and comes back down on, on itself as such. And in three-dimensional view, it's a structure that looks something like this, a very, very tight fold with a plunge towards the south here. These are rocks that were very, very strongly deformed over protracted periods of time. And it's the same bedrock that occurs over much of New York City. This tight fold in the rock suggests New York's bedrock was formed under great pressure. To confirm this hunch, McGarrian takes a sample to the lab for detailed analysis. Radiometric dating proves this rock is about 450 million years old. But the rock has even greater secrets to tell. It contains a kaleidoscope of minerals, which opens a window into the ancient world. To me, minerals are like the instrument cluster in your car. They tell you everything about how your car is running. McGarrian uses a microscope with polarized light to view the minerals. The examination tells us the former depth regime, how deep the rocks were. They tell you the age of the rocks. They tell you everything you want to know about the development of the Earth's crust. What's striking about these samples is that the minerals inside are elongated. It is a clue that these rocks must once have been crushed by massive forces. And the colors support this theory. Under the polarized light, the sample from Inwood Hill Park shows up blue. This comes from a mineral called kyanite, which forms at great depths. It's conclusive evidence that this rock was compressed deep under the surface. Rocks forged at these depths are much harder, ideal for a city's foundations. But what gigantic weight was on top? McGarrian believes there is only one answer. The rock was once buried under the crushing weight of a chain of massive mountains. The minerals that we find in the bedrock units of New York City tell us that the rocks of New York City were formerly buried when they were formed under very high pressures. And that, those high pressures indicate that these rocks formerly were produced at depths of 20 to 25 miles, and probably the mountains were as high as the Alps are today. But even the most impressive mountain chains can't survive the ravages of time. The Rocky Mountains, for example. Millions of years ago, they soared nearly six miles into the sky. 
Today, erosion has halved their size. The same process happened in New York. Rain, wind, and ice wore the ancient mountains almost flat. But the microscopic crystals found in the rock in Manhattan testify that they existed in the past. How did the mountains form? The answer lies in the way the Earth's crust moves. A network of interlocking individual pieces makes up the Earth's surface. Geologists call them tectonic plates. Over millions of years, they collide and break apart to form different continents. 450 million years ago, the Earth's surface looked completely different. North America was much further to the south. North America was tilted 90 degrees clockwise from its present orientation, and it was straddling the equator. As such, the climate was tropical. The east coast of North America was really experiencing Club Med conditions. The weather may have been awesome, but the ancient east coast was heading for trouble. The plate beneath it was moving. The east coast was on a collision course with ancient West Africa. 450 million years ago, they collided. The impact unleashed geological chaos. Under intense compression, the land was forced upwards to form a soaring range of mountains. The collision that took place is the most fundamental and impressive mountain building event to affect the east coast of North America. Today, all that remains are their stumps. Stumps that form the bedrock of modern day New York. The collision that built up the ancient mountains also folded the bedrock into dips and rises. These folds are responsible for the shape of Manhattan's skyline. The city boasts two clusters of skyscrapers in downtown and midtown. Here, the hard bedrock that formed deep underground was forced up. It is now close to the surface and provides solid anchorage for the high-rise buildings. In the dip in the middle, the rock was folded down. The area is filled with loose sediments, less suitable for skyscrapers. When the bedrock is at the Earth's surface, where it's actually exposed, then it's pretty easy to build tall buildings because you can root them directly into solid rock. However, in areas where the bedrock is deep and covered by glacial sediment, in those cases, it's very difficult to build tall buildings because you need to root those buildings either into solid rock or build concrete abutments called caissons that can support tall buildings. 